All right, so you're talking to Hamish and Brandon playing these roles that some people are familiar with. What's it like to step in the shadows of playing Abraham? Oh, he's just such a wonderful human. I mean, top three Americans of all time. You can fill in the other two. Um, uh, you know, it's like, wow, uh, what a responsibility, uh, but also what a privilege. Mm -hmm. And what about yourself? You was there enough research you did for the character you're playing? I certainly tried to do enough research, yeah, there's not a lot uh, out there, uh, which was uh, kind of a, di a different experience than what Hamish experienced, where we kind of were Frankensteining bits from what we knew and what we didn't know, and, and making a three-dimensional person who did exist, but uh, most people don't know about it. Now, will the show take liberties as opposed to what people already know in terms of the shooting of Lincoln? Uh, not in terms of the actual shooting, no, and the actual, that night of, uh, of, of assassination attacks, I mean, there were three of them, and Lincoln was the only successful one, but Secretary of State and the Vice President all had killers uh, going out for them. So, uh, but I would say where the show may take more liberties is in the actual chase, and because you guys were behind desks and more than telegraphs. Yeah, I don't think I don't think the War Department was getting as dirty as we do in the, in the show. So, but, uh, it's a wonderful story. But it speaks to the true spirit yeah, of yeah, the pursuit. I knew very um, little about all these. Now, people know what Lincoln's about. What's your role? What do, what do people know about your character? If we have to look it up, because everybody's going to look. We already know what Lincoln's all about. People will not find <laughs> anything on the internet about my character. Is he a composite or is just? He is the son of Edwin Stanton, who you will find a ton of information on if you Google, let's say. Um, but his son is just sort of not a historical figure in, in that way. The very attractive thing to get to, like, yeah, we built it. And for you, Hamish, obviously, you know, what goes into saying yes to the projects you take? Uh, terror. <laughs> uh, if something is very scary, I want to run towards it. Um, and this certainly was uh, yeah, the Mount Everest of terrifying things to do. All right. <laughs> you know, when you talk about John Wilkes Booth, everybody has this one idea of him. When you're playing this role, is this series trying to humanize him before he got to the deed that he did? Well, you know, everyone has an idea of him. My first idea of him came from an episode of The Simpsons um, where he, Bart Simpson, is playing John Wilkes Booth and he shoots Milhouse and he says, Hasta la vista, A.B. So I came to it with a bit of a novice. I didn't have too much of an idea of who Booth was, you know. We're not really taught the Irish education system, but, um, you know, his time period. So I really got to make him my own. I was sent a lot of books about him, there's a lot of stuff written about him, but I didn't find any of it too helpful because it was written for like a casual reader. It's saying when he walked down the street he must have felt like this. And I was reading it going, Are you? No, he felt like, you know, like let me do that job. So I had all of his letters. I had um these letters he had written from he was fifteen to twenty six. And he starts off as a kid, you know, saying he was mooning someone at a fair. And you go, oh, that's kind of funny, he's 15. And then he's 20 and he says, someone disrespected my sister, I hit him with a stick and watched him bleed. And by the time he's 25, he's saying, the white man has been enslaved by the black man in America. Now this is 1864, 1863. This guy, his racist ideology, what was happening in his head through these letters give you a complete, succinct view of his just descent into madness. Um, so that's how I came to him and that's how I sort of built the character. And for you two guys, how much research did you guys do in the research in the in the characters you're playing, or are they composites? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, there's a uh, there's a certain contrast in the amount that's out there about John Wilkes Booth versus some of the other conspirators. You know, it's kind of harder to dig up concrete evidence because you know they were chasing the guy who pulled the trigger, and uh, you know they were going to get everyone else involved. But in terms of what's written in the history books, there's not a lot on these characters. So a lot of it came from doing as much research as I could, and then also uh, forming a relationship between David Harold and John Wilkes Booth on set, and you know letting that breathe and, and come to life as it as it was going to. <laughs> Yourself. Research-wise, there was a fair amount to discover about Dr. Love on the internet. I think he was a very entitled doctor who felt the South was right. Um, and similar to what Will's saying, you're, 
they build this wonderful playground and then you get to work with wonderful actors that you sort of let go and absorb their personas and you react in the moment and that's that's the play part of it. Who were the ones that were like I'm trying to think of one guy. Will? I worked with Will. Yeah. <laughs> Will. I think we have one or two scenes. Maybe. I wasn't impressed with you. Oh, that's I'll be honest. Okay, but that's oh, are you that's rolling? Good. Hey, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Okay, so we're talking to the showrunner, Levy Smo. Uh, what type of liberties, or are we taking with this series? Are we trying to humanize John Wilkes Booth to get an idea as to why he did what he did, or, or, or what's the angle? No, not at all. Um, quite the opposite. Um, the, uh, the, the show centers around um, the Secretary of War, played by Tobias Menzies, who's pursuing Booth and who uh, absolutely feels that this person was a traitor and needs to be stopped mm -hmm. and punished. And what role do you play? I play Mary Sims. I play Dr. Blood's servant, who eventually ends up being this big observant person to kind of crack a big piece of the case in the assassination. Yeah. How much research did you do to play in the role? Um, there was limited um, research only because there wasn't that much stories on black life back then or record of it at all. So it was really just um, half of a, the little bit of information that we did have and then the rest of it collaborating with Monica to figure out what the energy and presence of Mary Sims felt like. Yeah. So when you have a... testimony is documented in the trial, so that's what we know about her. And we know very little else, so everything else we had to imagine. Okay.